What makes Spider-Man figure so great? What even is the best Spider-Man figure? It's Spider-Man season. You know what that means? More Spider-Man figures. This new anniversary line for Spider-Man by Hasbro has come under recent, uh, come to my attention. Yeah. Now, if you've been on Instagram or TikTok, like, at all, you'd see many people finding this Marvel Legends Spider-Man and Spinneret 2-pack in Target stores. Literally fucking everyone. Not me, though, because... Fuck me, I guess. But with the help of my good friend Calcium Father, I now have this 2-pack and I have the Iron Spider, so we'll take a quick look at that, too. Normally, I'm not much of a Hasbro Marvel Legends reviewer. I think there's plenty of people who do that already. But with all the hoopla surrounding this set, I figured I'd take a look at him, make sure they didn't fuck it up. It seems that whatever new action figure comes out, collectors always get excited about a new Spider-Man figure. I mean, you give Marvel collectors a choice between a full-grown woman and a Spider-Man toy, they'll pick the Spider-Man toy in a heartbeat. Not like they know anything about women in the first place. I mean, these are the same guys who pay $100 for a Spider-Man 3-pack, but then shiver at the mere thought of buying some new deodorant for their smelly asses. Like me. Yeah, we know that already. We kinda buy a lot of Spider-Man figures. In fact, we have so many, we have a hard time deciding on which one is the best one. And then Hasbro releases this two-pack, which is already dubbed the best Spider-Man of all time. And no one talks about Spinneret because... Marvel Collectors. Girls! I wanna see men! And has Hasbro made the best Spider-Man figure to date? No! But it's a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50. I don't think this is the best Spider-Man figure at all. In fact, it's not even in the top three. Not to say that it's bad. In fact, it's quite good. Just let me explain myself with a- Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to talk about Hasbro's latest what the fuck moment. And that's this six-sided abomination right here. That's right, Hasbro's windowless packaging. And I don't like it. He stinks and I don't like him. Let's ignore the fact that figure swappers are going to have a field day with these types of boxes. What really brings my piss to a boil is the fact that Hasbro is using this type of packaging to cheap out. Ever since this anniversary line came out, there's been a shit ton of just fucking inexcusable quality control problems. Yeah, that kind of shouldn't be a problem since you raised the prices on Marvel Legends again. Best believe I especially have a fucking problem with it. That shit fucking sucks. I resent your packaging, Hasbro. Fuck you. And I will rip their asses to shred over it, but that's a video for later. Enough stalling, this is what you came here to see. So what do I think about these two figures? I think they're pretty good. Very acceptable figures here. Are they worth the $55 price tag? Jesus Christ, I, you better hope so. So now we're gonna do the most logical thing and look at the Spider-Man figure first. Just kidding, fuck you, we're looking at Spinneret first. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dick. And yeah, I think this figure is cool, but nothing really special. For those who don't know, this is Mary Jane from another universe, in which she's married to Peter Parker and has a daughter. She even gets called a MILF in this storyline, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And that's what I'm gonna call her from now on, Spider MILF, because it's funny. So I could go on about how she got her powers. It's because her costume pretty much just borrows some of Peter's powers when they're close together. But most of you don't care. I mean, you probably just bought this set for the Spider-Man. Hey, listen, you bought this set for Spider-Man, I bought it for spider milf We are not the same. And by far the best part about this figure is this head sculpt. This one specifically, we'll get to the other one later. I love how the hair looks. Look at that hair bun, that shit looks good. And popular hairstyle amongst many middle-aged, stressed out women. And look at that face. That's honestly impressive. This is the first smiling head I've ever seen that doesn't creep me out. And the paint is so, so clean. Like, whoa. Hasbro, you did this? It's so clean, in fact, I, uh, <laughs> I wonder why the rest of it isn't that clean. Yeah, the white paint isn't really that good. In fact, they kind of fucked up in a few areas. 
like right here where they forgot to connect the lines from the top to the bottom or when the lines go over the white section. It's really a shame when the paint is cleaner on the back of the figure and her stupid fucking elf shoes. That may sound like nitpicking, but this shit is in a $60 set. And I guess if you want to split the value, this spinneret's worth like 30 bucks. And no, I don't think this is worth $30, especially when for the same price you can get this awesome looking Fortnite Thor. Like, don't get me wrong, I think this is still a fun figure to have. I mean, like, it's fucking spider move, dude. I just think what they're asking for it is kind of pushing it a little. But what about the Spider-Man? The figure most of you actually care for. Not me though, spider Milf supremacy. How good is he? And is he the best Spider-Man figure to date? The answer is yes and no. I gotta say, this is a really cool Spider-Man figure. The torso is reused from the retro Spider-Man that came out like a year ago. Everything else is brand new though, which finally makes this mold 100% unique, which is kind of how it should have been in the first place, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. The thing I like the most about this figure is how vibrant the red is, and the black webs and black paint overall is very, very clean. It kind of makes me wonder what the fuck happened with Spinneret. They also gave this body bigger shoulders, which looks way more natural than how we previously did, and it makes the proportions look that much better. But I gotta say, this may just be a personal thing, I think this body is a bit too big for Spider-Man. But we'll get to that later. Look at the eyes. They're shiny. That is awesome. See, it's stuff like this that makes the figure worth what we're paying for it. Not even the Mafex has that. And although this head looks very similar to the Hobgoblin Wave Spider-Man, it's actually completely different. The blue is also much darker, which makes the red look even brighter. And here's problem number one I have with this figure. The symbol is just too damn big. I don't know what the hell you feed him, but he is too damn big! Kinda like the figure itself. Oh shit! Oh, I went there. The symbol's just too big and I don't like it. And no, it's not accurate to renew your vows in that comic book. The symbol is so small, it's almost slightly bigger than my penis. The rest of the figure is painted very well. Also, I don't like... This, the freaking iliac crest or whatever the fuck. It just sticks out too much and it doesn't look natural. This is something the first appearance Spider-Man did better. Okay, almost. Did he say he wanted... No. No more. No more pain. No more. More. Just... Gotta move on. Vegeta, I took away your dad. Now I'm going to take away your virginity. <laughs> I think if the belt was higher, it would do a better job of hiding it. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like this ab crunch either, but we'll get to that later. Look at these pinless arms and legs. Well, look at that. It's like you're actually using the tech that people ask for. Ain't that fucking crazy? The back spider looks okay, and then you bend the arms forward and it, I, I guess it does a good job of extending, but then they didn't paint the blue all the way through the joint, which is like, are you fucking kidding me? Must you penny pinch this much? It's funny how the rest of the figure is super smooth and then he has these random wrinkles on his ass. It looks like he should have worn his brown pants. But overall, I like the sleek finish they gave this figure. It feels very nice. Oh my god, look! Articulated grippers! Oh my god! Oh, oh, dude! Oh, oh! This shit's overrated. Spinneret comes with five accessories. Fists, punch the bad guys, the whip hands, or I get how hands, and wall crawling hands, which are brand new. At least I think they're brand new. I don't know, they reuse shit all the time. I'm just glad it's not this shit again. The thing is, you can't even use these that much because Spinneret's not that poseable, but you know, it's whatever. Uh, why didn't you paint the inside of her glove? That's kind of an important part of her costume. And they just straight up didn't put it there on any of the hands. Couldn't add a little bit of red paint, man. I mean, we're only paying $60. It's no big deal. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. <laughs> but let's get a look at that Mary Jane head. And you know, it actually looks kind of nice. They're using the face print technology on the comic heads now, and I think that's a good move. This head is reused, because of course it is. Actually, it seems like her bangs cover her forehead more than the old version. I think I like the old version more, but I mean, they're both pretty good. Spider-Man also comes with five accessories. We got fists whippers and wall crawlers. Pretty much what every Spider-Man figure should come with. I just hope Hasbro's smart and makes these hands standard. What? No, dude! 
No! 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 And here's the Peter Parker head, also reused from the Spider-Man and MJ2 pack. The first Spider-Man and MJ2 pack. But like the MJ figure, they added the digital printing to the face, and I think it looks really good because of it. I don't have a regular Peter Parker head, so I'm glad I have this. I mean, it's a good amount of accessories, but this is what pretty much every other Marvel Legends comes with. But at least they didn't forget about MJ this time. Last time, they didn't give her fucking anything. But let me know what else they could have included. You know, for all the articulation this figure has, the head kind of sucks. His head's on a dumbbell joint, which I like, but the problem is they put the joint way too fucking deep in the neck. So I'm sorry, but this cut you put in the back of the neck won't do anything because the joint's too fucking deep for it to look up any further than this. And then his head's floating. What is he, fucking Rayman? Sack bomb. Sack bomb. You're a sack bomb. And you can give it to me when I need to come along. The head articulation should be good, but unfortunately it isn't. But he's got armpit joints which actually don't move forward that much. They move back a lot though. The arms can't go up past this. Now the bicep cut is kind of weird. They kind of just didn't put it all the way in or something. Cause as you can see there's like a tiny gap. But then uh oh, the plastic is super soft. Hasbro can you please stop using soft ass plastic for this part of the figure? I wouldn't be surprised if this fucking breaks, like my gore figure. And then he has double jointed elbows, which are pinless, thank god. And then you got your wrists. And then you got your diaphragm joint, which doesn't crunch forward that much. With the ab crunch, you can get this far, which isn't bad, but they can crunch the other way more, so like, what? I don't like this ab crunch either, I think they should have just done a ball jointed waist, like the Mafex figure. And then you crunch it forward and the back looks like this, which is ugh. Even their first appearance Spider-Man goes more forward than this. And then just to kind of bring down the mood even more, this figure's supposed to have drop down hips, but they don't feel, uh, like they work. This is how high his leg goes without fully extending the leg. And then here's it with it shifted down. I see no difference. Beautiful spread. Thighs, knees, and calf swivel. Very cool. I really like these new legs because they're sturdy. The old legs used to just warp all the time. So I'm glad they fixed that. Foot hinge and then, oh my god, articulated toes. First time in Marvel Legends. Except Beast had it. And imports have always had articulated toes. But you know what? This is cool still. It would be awesome if you made it standard among all Marvel legend. What? No, dude! No! This figure's fine. It's fine. But I want you guys to see that the Peter head, even with the hair, looks up more than the actual masked head. He still looks like Rayman. Spinnerette's head articulation is way better than Peter's. Her head sits pretty high on the neck and it's on a hinge, so that combined, she looks up literally all the way. And she can look down all the way. Honestly, this shit's pretty impressive, I wasn't expecting this. And then the rest of the articulation is what you expect. But then I have the same problem with Peter where the plastic is really soft right here. Hasbro, you really gotta cut this shit out, man. Why would we? We already got your money, bitch. Double jointed elbows, I'm glad they finally came around. Question is, what took them so long? And why did you stop? Uh, okay. Not gonna lie, we kinda messed up on that one. Please don't make that video. Too late. No! What the fuck is that? The torso is your standard female torso, so it moves okay. The crunch is abysmal. But then it goes backwards more. I'm sensing a pattern here. What this figure needs is a joint at the waist to make her crunch more forward. And these are the new female legs, which I like a lot because they're thicker for one thing. And just like the Spider-Man, they're very sturdy. So these will not get warped anytime soon, unlike the old female body mold, which was absolutely terrible. But then there's these seams on the thigh and, uh, and then the rest of the articulation is okay. I can't lie and say that these figures aren't really fun to mess around with. They're just very fun to have fucking around. Literally. What? We're gonna look at the Spider-Man first, since that's what all you nerds want to see anyway. Here he is next to Captain America and Iron Man. Here he is with the big three, aka the best Marvel Comics characters ever. And if you disagree, you're probably five years old. Here he is next to his amazing friend and his best friend in the entire world. No, it's not Deadpool. Read a comic. Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus. My custom retro- 
and my Mafex Carnage, who thinks your dick is this big. Here he is next to Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. And here he is next to the very first retro-carded Spider-Man and the ultimate Spider-Man. This is a great improvement, so uh, yeah, good job, I guess. The Hobgoblin Wave Spider-Man head does fit on here, but it looks really small and it just doesn't look right. There's no gap when you move the head up though, so like, what the fuck? And then here he is next to Superior Spider-Man and Ben Riley, And I really want to see a head swap between these two because Ben Riley never had these small eyes in the comics. Nah, I never liked the retro head to begin with, so I I don't really like this. However, I do like this. Finally, he actually looks like himself. I'm probably gonna leave this head on him. I'm not leaving this retro head on this Spider-Man though, fuck that. Here he is next to the symbiote Spider-Man and uh, he's bigger. Uh, I kind of don't like that. This is the Peter Parker head that came in the Craven 2 pack. It's the same Peter head that it came with. It's just, uh, it has bruises all over his face and I kind of dig this. You can put Ben Riley on there too. I don't know why, but you can. And here's the Amazing Fantasy 15 head on this figure. I don't like it. It looks too small and pinheaded. And if you're wondering what the Renew Your Vows head looks on the Amazing Fantasy figure, <laughs> I am Mrs. Nesbitt. And here he is next to the Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man and the Mafex Spider-Man. As you can see, he's taller than both of them. You may think these figures are just short, but no, this Renew Your Vows Spider-Man is actually a bit too tall in my opinion. Too big in general. In fact, if I take him out and put in the Amazing 15 Spider-Man, he looks a lot better in my opinion. I don't know, I never liked Spider-Man being this buff. Like, he's bigger than Johnny. Like, that's not right. Maybe next to Venom he looks okay, but he's a decent amount bigger than Green Goblin, which I kind of don't like. I think the Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man works a lot better in scale. But now it's time for the men to get a look at the figure that really matters. Here is Spider-Milf next to the Toys R Us Mary Jane and the Retro Gwen Stacy. Here's the Toys R Us head on the spinneret body, and I gotta say, this looks pretty cool. Her hair changes multiple times in the comics, so you can make this work. If you read the comic, you'd know that. This is the Mary Jane head that came with the retro Gwen Stacy. And this is the spinneret Mary Jane head on the old body. I wish this would work, but unfortunately the skin tone does not match. So when the dust settles, what do I think of this set? I don't know. It's okay, I guess. Oh, yeah! The spinneret is just a standard female Marvel Legends these days. But I can't lie and say I didn't have a lot of fun posing with her around. I mean, bro, it's Spider-Milf, and her storyline is actually really cool. Renew Your Vows is actually kind of a wholesome comic. Like, I kind of wish the main universe Spider-Man was like this. So yeah, I think Spider-Milf is pretty cool. Oh. Oh, you mean Spider-Man? Oh, okay, I got you. Yes, believe it or not, I think this Spider-Man's kind of alright. Toe joints, really clean paint. Overall, just a good figure. This is definitely the best Hasbro Spider-Man, except he isn't. That belongs to this guy. The toe joints are really the only thing separating these two, so I'll go more in depth on this topic in a later video. And that price, almost $60 after shipping and or tax. That's straight up ridiculous. I mean, in 2016, a three pack used to be $60, but now this shit is? And this is coming from a guy who actually likes Spider-Milf and actually likes the story she's coming from. Most of you bastards just want this set for the Spider-Man. And there's even people paying 60 just for the Spider-Man itself. What fucking idiots. I'm sorry, but for this price, I'd rather spend the extra money and get myself a Mafex. And in fact, the new bright colored Mafex Spider-Man is $60. You know what would have made this pack worth $60? If they threw an Annie. Who's Annie, you ask? Only their daughter. If you read the comic, you would know that. So because the paint isn't as clean as it should be, because of the soft plastic, because of the price, and the various defects other people have been having, no, I don't think this set is worth $60. It's not bad, but I think it's overrated. Don't forget... Spider-Milf Supremacy, baby! <laughs>